hello viewers and welcome to my channel uh, today's topic is polio uh, but before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and uh, share these videos to support this channel and uh, if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com now the topic is polio uh, its medical name, full medical name is poliomyelitis and uh, it's a highly contagious disease and it's caused by the virus which attacks the nervous system so the children younger than five years are more likely to contract the virus uh, than the children older than five years and uh, According to the statistics by the World Health Organization, 1 in 200 polio infections will result in permanent paralysis. And uh, uh, since the vaccination has been started, uh, the regions like America or Europe, uh, Western Pacific, and uh, Southeast Asia, they are uh, almost they are polio free regions, you know. Uh, you know, the polio vaccine was developed in 1953 and uh, it's available since 1957. And uh, since then, the number of cases has dropped dramatically. Uh, but there are certain countries in which the polio is still uh, persistent and they include like Afghanistan, Pakistan, especially the northern parts of the Pakistan and Nigeria. Uh, you know, it's very important that uh, it's eliminated from the world and it will help uh, to improve the quality of life, you know. Now the next thing is, what are the symptoms of the poliomyelitis? You know, about 95 to 99% uh, the people who contract the poliovirus, they are asymptomatic. So, it's also known as like subclinical polio, symptomatic polio or maybe subclinical polio. And uh, which means that they don't have the symptoms and the people infected with the polio virus can still spread the virus and they can cause the infection to others. Okay. And the non-paralytic polio is another, uh, you know, when we come to the types, you know, they are non-paralytic polio and paralytic polio. So these are the two main types of uh, polio and then the post-polio syndrome as well, you know. Now, you know, the signs and the symptoms of the non-paralytic polio can last from maybe somewhere between one to 10 days, you know, and these signs and symptoms include uh, fever, sore throat, vomiting, fatigue, and uh, headaches, you know. And uh, it's also known as, uh, the alternative name for this one is like abortive polio. Now, the next thing is what are the symptoms of paralytic uh, polio, you know. You know, about 1% of the polio cases are, can develop into paralytic polio. So, paralytic polio leads to Paralysis in the spinal cord, uh, brainstem, or maybe both brainstem and uh, spinal cord. And uh, where the spinal cord is involved is known as spinal polio. If the brainstem is involved, it is known as bulbar polio, or maybe bulbospinal polio, where both are involved. In. Now, the initial symptoms are similar to non polio, uh, non paralytic polio, you know. Uh, but after a few days, maybe a week, you know, the most severe symptoms appear and they may include uh, uh, 
loss of reflexes. Uh, spear like uh, kind of severe muscle pain, you know, or maybe loose and floppy limbs. Sometimes uh, one just one side of the body, you know, and uh, sudden paralysis like uh, it may be temporary or it may be permanent, you know, and uh, deformed limbs, especially the hips, the ankles, and the feet, and uh, you know it's very rare uh, for the full paralysis to develop. So it's uh, less less than one percent of the total poly cases will result in permanent paralysis. You know, so it's rare, and in five to ten percent, the polio uh, cases, the virus will attack the muscles that help uh, you to uh, breathe. You know, and which is which can be fatal and it can cause death. You know, so another one is like a post polio syndrome. Well. In that case, what are the symptoms? Well, you know, it's possible uh, for the polio to return even once you you have recovered from it, you know. And this can occur about uh, uh, maybe after 15 to 40 years, you know, of the initial attack. And the common symptoms in case of the post-polio syndrome uh, are like continuing muscle and joint weakness. Uh, muscle pain that gets worse are uh, becoming easily exhausted and fatigue, feeling weakness, uh, muscle wasting, uh, which is more commonly known as like a, a muscle atrophy, you know, and uh, you're having trouble while breathing or maybe swallowing the food, you know, uh, and uh, the problems uh, uh, with the sleep. Uh, or I mean breathing while you are asleep, you know, uh, which is medically known as sleep apnea. Uh, and uh, hard to tolerate the cold temperatures, uh, depression, and maybe trouble with the concentration and maybe the poor memory, you know. So these are the common symptoms of the post-polio syndrome, which can occur after maybe 15 to 40 years after the uh, initial attack of the uh, polio. Uh, well, the next thing is how how does someone catch this virus? You know, well, you know, as I told earlier, it's highly contagious, and uh, it spreads through the contact with the infected feces and the objects like toys. Uh, they play an important role in the transmission of this virus and sometimes it can transmit through a sneeze or maybe even cough as the virus lives in the throat and the intestines but this is less common now the people living in the areas with the limited access to the running water or the uh, toilets you know uh, they often contact the polyvirus from drinking water which is contaminated with the infected human waste and uh, uh, the virus is so contagious, it's very contagious that anyone living with someone who has the virus, it can catch. And the pregnant woman uh, and the people who have the weak immune systems, like uh, the people with the AIDS or HIV positive, you know, or maybe the young children, uh, they are at a high risk group. And if you have uh, not been vaccinated, uh, then your ch chances increase that you will get, you can uh, get the uh, polio virus or if you are uh, specifically when you are traveling to the uh, area where there has been an outbreak of the polio and uh, living with someone infected with polio or hand the lab specimens or maybe uh, if your tonsils are removed or uh, like you are stressed so in that case you are more likely that you can uh, get the polio virus. Uh, the next process is about the diagnosis, you know. Well, mostly your doctor will be able to uh, diagnose you simply by having the uh, medical history and the physical examination. Uh, now during the physical examination, the doctor will look for any kind of uh, impaired reflexes and uh, 
neck stiffness uh, and specifically if uh, you have a problem in lifting the head while lying flat you know so these are the uh, uh, signs your doctor will be looking for during the physical examination and there are some lab tests for your throat your you know, like the floor or maybe a stool or maybe cerebrospinal floor or uh, spinal tap you know so uh, i will order the test so just to confirm the diagnosis uh, the next thing is about the treatment you know well we can treat the symptoms uh, but the virus uh, runs its course you know so as we know that there is no cure and the best way to treat the polio is to prevent it uh, to happen with the help of the vaccinations you know and uh, the supportive treatments may include uh, uh, to control the symptoms like the bed rest or maybe the pain killers or anti spasmodic drugs or the muscle relaxants uh, antibiotics to treat infections you know and the portable ventilators uh, to help uh, to improve the breathing a physical therapy for maybe the braces to help walking you know and uh, heating pads or maybe the warm towels to ease the muscles and aches and uh, spasms you know and physical therapy which helps to uh, uh, treat the pain and the affected muscles you know or maybe the pulmonary rehabilitation in case where the lungs are involved and uh, in extreme cases uh, you may need the wheelchair or maybe other mobility devices you know uh, to gain them to make the patient more uh, i mean uh, comfortable less dependent you know on the others you know so these uh, can help to increase the mobility uh, the best way to prevent is the vaccination and every single child should get vaccinated Uh, for the polio thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesintreatment.com and please do not forget to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel thank you goodbye